Good morning. It is the 6th of December. It is the second Sunday in Advent. And we welcome you as the St. George's Parish family celebrates God and celebrates this Advent season. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. God of all times and places, you were holy and loving. You create pathways where there is no path. You prepare us to receive wonders beyond imagining. In every time and every place, you have raised up leaders who point to your glory and who honor your greatness. You have called us by name, baptized us with water and with the Holy Spirit. You bless us for abundant living and set us in the world to serve you. We are your people, and so we worship you as our creator, our redeemer, and the breath of our lives, one God, now and always. Amen. John the baptizer called people to repent, and so we join together in confession, seeking God's grace. We say together, God of mercy, we confess that we resist changing our hearts and minds, even when your word compels us to reconsider cherished opinions. We are more comfortable remaining as we are than taking up your challenge. Forgive us for being set in our ways and seeing others only in light of inherited ideas, and past experience. Forgive us our reluctance to forgive each other as we have been forgiven. By the power of your Holy Spirit, transform us by your great love and mercy. Give us new eyes for seeing, new ears for hearing. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now the collect for the second Sunday of Advent. God of hope, you call us from the exile of our sin with the good news of restoration. You build a highway through the wilderness, you come to us, and bring us home. Comfort us with the expectation of your saving power made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Comfort, O oh comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I say, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here's your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, 
and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we say the song of peace. In the days to come, the mountain of the house of the Lord shall tower as the highest of mountains and be raised above the hills. There shall all the nations flow. Many peoples shall come and say, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, that we may walk in his paths. For the law shall go out from Zion, from Jerusalem, the word of the Lord. He shall judge between the nations, decide for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, their spears into pruning knives. Nation shall not lift sword against nation. They shall never train for war again. O people of Jacob, come. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, those incredible words from the prophet Isaiah, comfort. Oh, comfort my people, says your God. Those words are so identified with this time of year. They're just, they're words that feel so good and so right when we hear them in the season of Advent. And when they are set to the music of Handel's Messiah, they make your heart soar. But there's way more going on here than just feel good words. This passage of scripture we have this morning from Isaiah, it is, I would suggest to you, the most significant proclamation in all of the book of Isaiah. It is one of the most significant passages in all of the Hebrew scripture. And it is fundamental for us to understand the life and the mission and the ministry of Jesus. So let's, let's just take a bit of a deeper look. And, and to do that, we need to go back to chapter six in the book of Isaiah. And, and we hear this. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Sarah's were in attendance above him. And one called to the other and said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord, the God of hosts. What we have here is a vision by the prophet Isaiah, a vision of Yahweh, of God in heaven, seated on a throne, attended by the angels, the cherubim, the seraphim, the seraphs, and they were the divine council. This is a, a vision of the heavenly government. And Isaiah he knows immediately that he is out of his league because he says, oh, woe is me. I am lost for I am a man of unclean lips. I live among a people of unclean lips. And yet my eyes have seen the king, the 
the Lord of hosts. He doesn't know why he's there, but he knows he's not up to the task. And then we have this marvelous moment when one of the seraphim comes to him with a burning coal and touches his lips and pronounces forgiveness to him. And then he gets his commission. Yahweh says, who am I going to send to my people? And Isaiah, perhaps sensing that he has no choice, says, here I am, send me. This call of Isaiah sends him out into the world, sends him out into Judea to bring a message of judgment to Yahweh's people to take a message to them that says there is no justice in the land, there is no righteousness in the land, and so there is no good future for the land. You have messed up and you are going to suffer because of it. Okay, flash forward 150 years. 150 years later, the people of Judah they have experienced that suffering. They have been taken into exile in Babylon. They are despairing. They feel abandoned by Yahweh. They've come to believe that their God is impotent and unable to save them. They have given up hope. And at that point, we get this reading. We hear the words, comfort, oh comfort, my people, says your God. And what we have here is Isaiah, second Isaiah, the one who's come to be called second Isaiah, he is having a vision. And his vision is of God in heaven on the throne. And it is God who says to the divine assembly, it is God who says to this heavenly council, Comfort, oh comfort my people. He's saying to them, listen, my people need to hear a word of comfort. So you've got to go out and give it to them. Tell them that their sins are forgiven. them. Pronounce forgiveness to them. We need to restore the people. And then we hear a voice cries out. Well, the voice who cried out was one of the heavenly government, one of the angelic attendants. And this voice says, listen, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Now, what that's about, uh, at that time, highways were built in the wilderness when a king was a conquering king, when a king had defeated the nation's enemies, when a king had won a great victory, they built a highway so there could be a magnificent, royal, majestic procession with all of the people cheering the victory. This voice cries out in the wilderness, that would be the wilderness between Babylon and Judah, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight a desert highway for our God. What, what, this, what this angel is saying is that Yahweh, Yahweh, the God whom the people of Israel had believed to be impotent, the God whom Babylon dismissed, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was taking matters into Yahweh's holy hands and Yahweh was about to stand the world on its head. This angelic voice that cried out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, is saying, there's a new sheriff in town. So hold on, hold on. And, and a bit later, we hear another voice cry out. And the voice says, cry out. And, and this angel, this angelic voice, this one is talking to Isaiah, second Isaiah. And Isaiah says, what shall I cry? And then from his despair, he says, all the people are grass. Their constancy is like the flowers in the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. What he's saying is, listen, why should I bother? These people are going to muck it up. They always do. They're going to lose their faith. They always do. It's a waste of time. It always is. 
And then the voice comes to Isaiah, and this time it's not part of the heavenly council. It's not the voice of an angel speaking. This time it is the voice of Yahweh. And Yahweh says, get yourself up to a high mountain and announce to my people, let them know, here is your God. Here is your God. Give them the hope that they need. To the people who are in exile, take them a word of hope. Take them a word of hope. Listen, you need to know that those words, here is your God, those are the words that is the most significant proclamation in the book of Isaiah. To say, here is your God, is to say to a people in exile, to say to a suffering, despairing people, your God is present with you. Your God is active right now. So hold on, hold on. You are still in exile, but that's gonna to come to an end because God has taken matters into God's own hands. Here is your God, hold on. Okay, six centuries later, in Judah, and, and depending on, on who you read about when Mark's gospel was written, uh, it was either at the height of or at the end of the Jewish-Roman War. The people in Mark's community, the people in Judah at the time, they, they, had seen, they had seen bloodshed beyond imagination. They had seen violence, they had seen death, they had seen pillaging, and they may well already have seen the destruction of the temple. And there was incredible despair. There was people, there were people losing faith. And it was, it was very much, very, very much like the experience of the people of Judah in Babylon. And then into that, we hear Mark beginning his gospel. And listen to the words he says. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Do you hear what he's saying? He's saying to those people, who were going to hear his words, those people who were going to read his scroll, those people who were in the midst of suffering, here is your God, hold on. And, and then just to make it crystal clear what he's talking about, he goes on to say, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. He is talking about building that highway because what, what all of Mark's gospel is about is proclaiming to a suffering people that in the life, in the ministry, in the death and in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the victory had already been won. God's kingdom had come near, God's kingdom had been launched and they needed to hold on and trust and live in hope. And the hope that they were living for was the hope of shalom, the hope for peace. And peace doesn't just mean the end of violence. Shalom means wholeness for all people, wellness for all people, justice for all people, freedom, for all people. Shalom means a time and a place when no one does without and no one makes war against anyone anymore. An entire gospel whose purpose was to say, here is your God. Hold on. Well, folks, here we are, and it is Advent. 2020. And I don't think that there has ever been a time when people needed Advent more. In the midst of all that our world is experiencing right now, there is much fear. 
there is much to spare. There are many who wonder if the God that they've been told to believe in from the time that they were children is impotent. Where is God in all of this? In the midst of pandemic, in the midst of unrest, where is God in all of this? And in, in the midst of this world that we live in, with all of the stuff that we are going through, we hear the words spoken to Isaiah, which I believe are spoken to you and to me, get up on a mountain and say to my people, here is your God. Your God is here, active and present. So hold on, hold on. And I, I believe every time, every time we offer words of comfort to people who are alone and feeling isolated, we're saying to them, here is your God. Every time we feed the hungry, we're saying, here is your God. Every time we do the thing that is loving, every time we offer forgiveness, every time we live in a way that helps people to feel as if they are important and cared for, we are saying, here is your God, hold on, hold on. We are a people who live between the proclamation of the gospel and the final realization of the kingdom. And that means that we live with attention of promises made but not fulfilled. But yet we must live with hope and we must live with hope for shalom, salam, peace, for the time when there is wholeness in our world, when there is wellness in our world, when there is peace and freedom and justice in our world. But until then, we must believe, we must proclaim, we must shout out to a world that desperately needs to hear it, hear, is your God. Hold on. Amen.
And now we join and say together, Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel. The Lord, our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. God, God of wisdom and patience. In this season of Advent, we wait. We wait for your gifts of hope and peace to claim the world once more. We wait on you in prayer, knowing you hear us even before we speak. Prepare our hearts and our minds to welcome the coming of your Son once again and prepare our courage and conviction to follow the way of the Lord. Thank you for leading us on the way, especially in these difficult days when the pandemic still threatens and people are so divided. We are so grateful that we can rely on your strength and comfort when so much around us has become uncertain. Comfort those who are troubled in mind or spirit as the days grow shorter. Strengthen the bodies and the spirits of those who are tired or suffering. Embrace those who live with loss. And protect children and young people for whom the future seems confusing and unimaginable. God, who makes all things new, turn our lives upside down and shake out the unnecessary distractions of this season. Focus us on what is truly important and who truly matters to us. Turn our lives right side up so that our priorities and purposes match those we have learned from Jesus. Shape and reshape us until we conform to his way of living and his likeness. Turn us upside down, O oh God, so that we value what is hidden and small more than what is showy and grand. Open our eyes to the needs of the most vulnerable in our community and help us speak out with them and for them, even if we must challenge those who usually get their way. Turn us right side up, God so that we can see we have more than enough resources to share with those who have much less than they need day by day. Hear us now as we name places, people, and situations that need your care. Pray for Todd, our bishop, 
and all bishops and clergy who are working creatively to maintain the church in our current challenging situation. We continue to pray for our selection committee as they go about the very challenging task of finding a new priest who will lead St. George's boldly into the future. We pray for our wardens and parish council as they work to maintain the life and ministry of this parish family. God, you are the Alpha and Omega, our beginning and our end. Strengthen us with your spirit to build your kingdom here and now, now and always. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now wait and work for the coming of the day of God. In the rough places of our world, prepare a straight path for the Lord. As much as you are able, be signs of hope in our hurting world. Be instruments of peace among your family and friends and in your community. And look for signs of God's loving care all around you and trust in our Creator's unfailing love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those whom you love and pray for today, tomorrow, and forever.